Hello learners, welcome to yet another session of Understanding Tourism. I am Dr. Tangzakhombi Akoizam, Faculty School of Tourism and Hospitality Service Management, IGNO. In your previous session, you have already been introduced to certain basic aspects and terminologies and concepts of tourism, like what is tourism, who is a tourist, the difference between inbound and outbound, domestic, international. You have been introduced to the concept of destination also, as well as the different types and forms of tourism. Tourism has become a multi-billion dollar industry today. Lots of revenues are generated. And this is precisely the reason why every country in the world, for that matter, within each country, every state, province, territory, they are also vying for a share of their tourism arrivals or tourist inflow. Now against this backdrop of intense competitive environment, it is very important for a tourism professional or students of tourism to understand the characteristics of a tourist. Why? Because tourist is the focal point around which the whole tourism industry revolves. No tourist, no tourism industry. It's as simple as that. Well, there are various aspects and one of the most fundamental aspect is to know why the tourists travel. In our terminology, we say the purpose or the motive of tourism. And this is exactly the point which we are going to discuss today. So your learning objectives after this session, you should be able to outline the various purposes, motives of tourism and their characteristics and you will understand other important determinants which influence these purposes and demand. People travel for a variety of reason or purpose and various classification has been attempted to group them. One is we categorize them other as personal purpose or work related purpose. Then we categorize them as motivators. In motivators we have physical motivators which are linked to activities which will refresh the body and then there is the cultural motivators, which is a desire to see and know more about other cultures. Now, interpersonal culture, it is a desire to meet new people, whereas status and prestige motivators, they are linked to recognition and attention from others. Again, we can discuss the purpose and the motives of tourism in the context of pull and push theory. Let us take an example here. If you have a desire to see the Eiffel Tower, and this desire, because of this desire, you book a holiday trip to Paris. Now, Eiffel Tower itself becomes a pull factor for you. And then you take another scenario. You have a very heavy work schedule, or you have a monotonous, repetitive, everyday schedule, and you want a break from it. So what you do is, you plan for a holiday and this monotonous schedule that you have every day, it triggers in you or it pushes you to take that holiday. So this is how we connect the push and pull theory with the travel motivators. Well, like we said, there are various uh, motivators or the purpose for which people travel. We will discuss them one by one. The first one we take up sun, sea, sand and sex. And in American parlance or in American vocabulary, this is called as the 4S formula. Now such holiday, it relates to sea bathing with access to a beach. This is where the sandy part comes, good weather, sunshine. And it is usually an expectation of tourists who want to escape from temperate to tropical climates. Because top, tropical climates have got a moderate uh, weather and they have this uh, ample sunshine all throughout the year so it becomes a draw for them and one and also fashion concepts like the craze for a sun tanned skin over the pale complexion is another trigger for such type of motive and then there are health fetism which also dictates the use for activity over indolence now because this type of holiday or the 4s formula is a type of holiday which is based on glamour glitter fun and entertainment and, it, and since it is available in the most exclusive regions of the world, in enclaves where the tourist can abandon himself to pursue leisure undisturbed, 
they are being snared at or they are being discouraged by the cultured critics because it incorporates many actual motives and states quite openly that it aims at complete relaxation. It is the idea of a paradise, a garden of Eden in which people are free and unconstrained and everybody can be happy in their own way. Now this has certain rep repercussions also. Such tourists only have a lightning view of culture through performances by and services of local women and men. And at the same time, the performers are also exposed to a state of corruption that is often justified by the money it earns. Because many host residents, they earn a living in tourism related services and they might be, ha might be conservative and religious. And they might also object to the freedom of man and woman socializing freely together. Yet they tolerate or they turn away their eyes, they, they turn a blind eye. Because for them, hospitality, which was once a source of honor, has now become a means of earning a living. So this type of tourism, the 4S formula, is not being encouraged much. Next, we have the leisure, touring, sightseeing, cult sightseeing culture motif of travel. Now, this is the most common purpose of motif of tourism, and it includes visiting natural or man-made sites, you attend sporting or cultural events, you attend summer camps for youngsters, or you visit established specializations of well-being hotels, or sporting activities like you go for skiing, you go for golfing, diving, surfing, or you take a holiday for and go for a hiking with your family. You attend concerts, cruising, you go to the casino, or you rest. Honeymooners also come in this category. Then people also go for fine dining and they visit recreation and entertainment facilities also. Now this type of tourists, they would like to wander. And that's why they prefer to stay at different places every night and they are not content to remain in one place or the other. And such tourists, they move with a camera and they are interested to learn about people, monuments, culture, places and country. Now, taking selfie has become a very important part of every tourist itinerary. You have also heard of people taking uh, selfies and getting killed in the process. Now, this is a very serious uh, thing which have come up in everyday life of a tourist nowadays. Now, this type of tourists who are interested in culture and sightseeing, we need destination with good transport and accommodation infrastructure to satisfy them because they will be moving from one place to another and they want to cover as many places as possible. Now the third type of purpose is visiting friends and relations. Now why do we visit or when do we visit our relatives? We visit them when there is a wedding in the family or we have any other family events or you have short term caring for the sick or the old etc. And again Tourist people, they turn tourists and they often visit their friends and relation and host to visit areas of interest. And this is a strong motivation, like VFR is a strong motivation for domestic tourism in India. And sectors such as accommodation, food and beverages are not much benefited through this because tourists, when they go and stay with their relatives, their accommodation part is taken care of, their fooding part is taken care of. So what they do is it is only the transportation sector which benefits because when they have to travel for their, from their home to their relative's place, obviously they need a point of transport and surface transportation is widely used because if they are going to that destination and they want to explore certain areas in the destination, obviously they need surface transport to go from one attraction to another. So this type of uh, people who goes and visit their friends and relatives, they are saving a lot of money on accommodation as well as on the fooding. And if you look in uh, the tourism operation, the three most important thing, one is accommodation, one is transportation, fooding, and if these three are taken care of, then next is the attraction, and all your money that you have can be spent on that. Now, FBR is an important sector in, in, the, in the Indian context and there is a 
very interesting combination of uh, FBR and LTC in India. LTC meaning leave travel concession, which the employer and the employer gives to their employ to the employees. And in many cases in India, this LTC is used in combination with visiting friends and relatives. Now, like I said, the transportation part is uh, the cost of the transportation is borne by the employer and the accommodation and the fooding part is taken care of by your friends and relatives then obviously all the money that you have you can spend on sightseeing you can spend on leisure activities you can spend on recreation and you can sh share on spend on shopping now apart from this there is another type of uh, purpose for which people travel and that is a business and incentive travel now, business travel is one of the most revenue generating segment of the tourism industry. Now, it includes travel for uh, attending meetings, conferences and conventions, trade fairs, exhibitions, or you go and promote your products or you go and buy your products for your business that you are conducting. And today, there are so many organizations that feel that their executives are more creative and productive in a resort atmosphere. So hence the number of corporate conferences is on the increase. Public and private sector, association and professional bodies, trade unions and political parties are also customers for convention come tourism complexes. Now if you look at the needs of the business traveler and the holiday maker, because both of them require transportation, both of them require accommodation, so obviously most of their needs they overlap. The only difference is that business trips are not directed towards touristic centers or resort. Rather, the demand is directed to centers of trade and commerce or diplomacy for which they have come. But one thing to be noted here is when in uh, nowadays uh, what happens is when people go for conferences, their spouses also or the family members also accompany them. So when the day's working is done, when the, conference, uh, when the conference dealings are done, at the end of the day, they, they get to relax with their family and then they also behave as tourists. And in many a times, they also extend. Supposing if the conference is only for two days and they're going to a new destination. So if the family takes along, what they do is they usually extend it for two or three days. So they have a complete holiday trip in that. Also, in uh, one of the difference between the uh, tourists and the business traveler is that business traveler they, they, may, they may demand special services like communication and secretarial facilities, meeting and convention facilities. You have this uh, everywhere Wi-Fi connectivity and all are here, but in terms when you are attending a conference or a convention, these are necessary features, and they make sure that they are, av uh, they are availing these facilities. And if these facilities are not available, then it becomes very difficult for them to get on with the business dealings that, that they have. Now, this business travel is what we call as MICE, M-I-C-E. M stands for meetings, I for incentive travels, C for conferences and conventions and E for expositions and ex exhibitions or it can mean events also. Now another area of emerging importance to the tourism industry is incentive travel or travel of a touristic nature as a reward for some special achievement or contribution of an employee to the firm. Now this is a type of, uh, this is a type of uh, uh, in, uh, what do you call a motivational uh, thing that employees um, employers are giving to their employee for example if there is a tour operation company and you are working there and uh, they ask you to sell a tour packets maybe 100 tour packets in a month and this they set you a target if you sell 100 tour packages per month for three months consecutively then you will be given a foreign trip so this acts as a motivation and the employees are motivated to fulfill the targets that has been set. Now most employees they consider this paid holiday, especially a foreign trip as a desirable perk. This is more so because a firm's incentives is always of a higher quality 
and standard than what an employee can afford on his own budget in terms of services, in terms of dif distance and the length of stay at the resort. Even the quality of the, of the quality and the star rating of the resort also matters. If you have to pay from your own pocket, you might go for a two star resort. But if your employee is play paying for you, then obviously uh, they would go for the five star rating resort and so on. Now another type of uh, purpose that tourism tourists engage in are the education for educational purpose. And education since time immemorial has always been a central motivating factor for travel. And it is not limited to satisfying an interest of learning about the cultural heritage, customs, flora and fauna of the host destination, but it, it also extends to the travel for research and other academic programs, the continuation of studies in schools, colleges and universities, that also in a formal environment. Now it also comprises, like educational tourism also comprises student exchange programs between educational institution and also specialized study of short term duration. For example, a foreigner coming to India to study the art of yoga, language, dance forms, maybe for a month or two, they also belong to the educational tourism category. Now the structured studies involving longer duration of stay at the host destination, sometimes years together is a phenomenon which is graining great importance from the tourism point of view. Like for example, a student goes uh, to study abroad for four years, so obviously he has to stay for four years in that place and when he stays for four years in that place, then he behaves like a local, he partakes the, the facilities and the amenities that, it, that is available there. So advertising for new student in techs are on are very high now on the list of many educational institutions because they generate a lot of revenue. Now we can study this as uh, with the help of an example and we can call it as the multiplier effect of educational tourism. For example, a student studies in uh, Australia from India. So what they do is to, to go to Australia, he has to take a flight. So this benefits the airline management, the staff, the airlines authorities in both the countries. Again, while the student is in Australia, he avails various types of services. Some of the examples are if he is going for uh, a short trip or a vacation for two days, then he, uh, he can stay in a homestay, so it benefits the honor. Then local conveyance, going from, from his university to, from, to the place where he stays, so it benefits the transportation company on the staff and the individual owners. Shopping, when he indulges in shopping, he benefits the sh store owners, the shopkeepers, the management staff, the product manufacturing companies. And when he goes to see maybe a movie or other entertainment activities, what he, he benefits the owners and the staff, the restaurants, pubs, now all these things, when you go to restaurants, you benefit the owner. And when you go for sightseeing, if you take the help of a travel agent or the tour operator, or the tourist guides or staffs at monuments, so these are benefited. Now this is what we call as the multiplier effect. The money that you spend, it is not generated or it, it does not stay confined to the next person. It, it trickles down. So this is what we call as the multiplier effect. Now another purpose of for which people travel is for the healthcare services and this traveling to another place for medical treatment services has now spiraled into a multi-dollar billion industry worldwide, worldwide. We often refer to this concept as medical tourism or healthcare tourism wherein patients that travel to different destinations for availing better advanced medical treatment and it may include availing services from hospitals, clinics and other specialized places to, to receive the medical treatment. This may be based on medical advice including your cosmetic surgeries. Now whatever the reasons for seeking medical expertise elsewhere, whether it may be the expertise is not available in the country where you belong or there is a long queue uh, for the facility that you are desire desiring to avail. There, there is now an ease and an affordability and an increased accessibility of international travel and combine this with world-class health care 
and all of a sudden health tourism or medical tourism as we call it is taking up in a big way in many countries. And in many and many times medical tourists they also weigh their options before choosing a destination. They take into account the budget that they have, the time the, the time period that they have and the facility that will be available in the destination country. And in many cases again tourists when they go if they have, for example, in America, in the United States of America, the dental procedure are very costly. So tourists who are coming to India and then uh, dental problems and dental treatment are freely available here at low cost. So what they do is when they come to India as tourists, they also get their dental problems treated. Now, so this tourists, they club their treatment requirements with their holiday itinerary. So this is another uh, important, uh, what do you call, uh, change in the perception or the f behavior of the tourists which is coming up. Then again tourists they travel for religious purpose. Now this category it includes attending religious meetings and events. You go for pilgrimages and in India pilgrimages centers are a major attraction for domestic tourists. We have the Amarnath Yatra, the Vaishno Devi which are with, with thousands and thousands of people throng and go every year. Now apart from this there are other purposes of tourism which may include you go for shopping or you volunteer, you work as a volunteer and you go there. Now because interests of tourists within a particular destination it does not remain the same. So there arises a need for catering tourists with special interests. The interest may be in the, towards art, it may be towards education it may be towards architecture, it can be towards culture, music, sports, so many, so many, wildlife is there. So we have ecotourism coming up, we have wildlife tourism coming up, and we have a group of students coming to say to India to study the Mughal architecture. So this are because of the special interest that you have, then they are treated as special interest tourists. Now this tourist, depending on their interests, some of them they may like to visit museum, folk centers, sports, mountain climbing if you are a physical enthusiast or you and then you try to cultivate and then they try to cultivate relationship with the nature and this tourist they are usually well read and collect other sources of information before visiting the destination. So in a way they are more conscious, they are more ethical and then they try to imbibe the local environment into their itinerary. So this tourist, since they need experiences, so they tend to stay with the local people in local houses, eating with them. And this tourist, many a times, those who are environmentally conscious tourists or ecotourists as we call them, they help in protecting environment by participating in cleaning beaches or other city areas. So they also contribute. So it is not only about going and going for a holiday. It is also about contributing. It is also about being a part of uh, the type of world that we are going to build. So they also help in designing new tourism product. Because when people with special interests come up, then the tour operators and the travel agencies, they are also involved in looking for new tour packages which will satisfy the interests of such type of tourists and such type of tourists they are engaged in voyages of discovery. So special interest tourists are coming up in a very big way and tourism has been widely benefited or they have been saved from what, from what might have otherwise been completely lost. But in recent times again special tourists, uh, special interest tourists is also becoming stereotype. Then we have another form of uh, tourism which is called as alternative tourism. Now this type of tourism it came up because tourists they do not like to they do not like to do the same thing which normal tourists do. And the negative impact of mass tourism when they see the negative impact then it gave rise to alternative tourism. And this type of tourism they want less to be with other tourists and more with living cultures and then they share services of local people and they will move with local friends so that they can understand about their political, social and religious tradition. Now when you talk about all these purposes and all these motives, 
Apart from this, there are other factors, other determinants which also impact or the tourist decision making or where to go for a holiday and when to go for a holiday. One is psychological in nature and this uh, refers to the relaxation in completely different environment which is different from what you have at home. So it is more of a psychological need, a status symbol or peer pressure just because my friend has gone for a foreign trip, I would also want to jump into that. So it is mostly psychological, You're, you want to look good on holidays, you take uh, upload worthy pictures so that the number of likes on your Facebook page will be more. And so colleagues, neighbors and friends, they influence our choices and the pressure to conform is indeed great. And nowadays it has become fashionable to take a holiday at a certain period of the time of the year or to a certain destination. And for some tourists, there is a security in uh, habitually taking the same holiday to a favorite hill or a beach resort every year. Then another determinant is the socio-political determinant. Whereas, wherein many societies, they now encourage tourism as a form of rejuvenation. Many state now gives tourism entitlement to their employees, like the LTC scheme that we have discussed before and other paid holiday facilities, it falls under this category. The political system also encourages certain preferences for holiday destination as well as activities. This is usually seen when you are choosing tourist destination for holding conventions or conferences. For example, a person, a big conference is going to be held and a person from India who is organizing that conference, they want to hold it in a foreign country. So they will think 10 times before they hold in a country like Pakistan. But for a neutral country like France, it will be a catwalk, a catwalk for them. So political or bilateral relationship also matters. Now another uh, determinant is economic determinant. This is where the disposable income or the freedom from any money constraint comes into the picture. Because for tourism to have disposable income is very important. And what do you mean by disposable income? Disposable income is the income which is left after you have spent on your basic needs, basic needs like food, shelter and clothing. So the income which you can spend on, le le on leisure or relaxation, that is called as disposable income. So travel is less undertaken by people who, are, who have money constraints. Then again, tax policies, discounts, foreign exchange regulations, special offers, they all help in tourism activities. And government can encourage outbound tourism by their tax policies and the permissions to take foreign exchange out of the country also matters. Now time is another great determinant which has a great impact on tourism demand. For example, people with school going ch uh, children, they, they tour mainly during the summer or the winter vacation. And retired personnel, they have more time in their hands, so they take more holidays. So now that we have discussed that various types of uh, purposes or the motive for tourism, and we have also seen uh, what are the other determinants which have an impact on tourism demand. So this is all I have for today. Thank you so much for your time.